the absolute state of unfinished AAA games. I think the problem is that most games... Oh, and... Like... Okay, so the absolute state of unfinished AAA game releases by Nasu. So, I think the reason is a lot of these games come out as service games, like um, live service. So they think that they can release it unfinished and just add on to it to make it better. Sometimes it works, most of the time it doesn't, but at least to me that seems to be what they're doing. Um, and of course, getting uh, pressure from the top to release their game sooner uh, never helps. Let's uh, take a look. Have you ever been playing a game and it just... <laughs> Perhaps it hits you with a bit of... That's funny. Maybe even a little. Ooh, what? <laughs> That's crazy, man. Then you might be entitled to nothing. Hold this L. All out, yeah. Plus the protocol. Pokemon. Video games have come a long way since the days of Pong and text-based adventure games. Nine console generations and over a trillion dollars in revenue later, yep. the games industry has grown bigger than both the film and music industries combined. More people are playing games than ever, and more games are being made. Everybody's grandma and grandpa knows what a Mario the Hedgehog is. We got companies like Netflix trying to start their own game studios. Hollywood won't stop making video game that. adaptations. Hmm. With all the money pouring into the industry, greatly improved hardware and software, game studios are able to produce ambitious high budget projects that never could have been made before. And with every gaming platform having an internet connection, they can continue to update their games to patch out any bugs after release. But despite all these advancements, it seems like we've been getting more and more games released with game-breaking bugs and missing content. Well, the thing is, these advancements are the exact reason why. Before the internet became a core facet of gaming, if a studio dropped an unfinished game, that game stayed unfinished. Loading yeah. screens taking an un- Asman brings it up a lot all the time when he talks about this stuff is that there was no DLC there was no updates if you release a game and it's shit it's gonna stay shit and it's not gonna sell godly amount of time get comfortable you got a lot of waiting ahead of you fighting game has a single character that's better than every other fighter and completely breaks the game's balance I hope you like mirror matchups if a game launched in a poor state that became the game's legacy and there's no better example than Sonic 06. Uh, I don't think I played this one. Yeah, no. It looks stupid. Had no interest in it. What was originally intended to be a series reboot and a return to form for Sonic is instead remembered as the worst game in the series, if not one of the worst games of all time. Unintuitive physics, shoddy cutscenes, unbearable loading screens, questionable writing, bad dialogue, and countless bugs make the game nearly unplayable. Um, yeah, but it sounds like even if you took away the bugs, the game would still be shit. So I don't know if this is a good thing to actually bring up as an example the game wasn't just bad what i think a good game to bring up for like unfinished game would be like anthem because i think that game was like at its core really really fun um it just had a lot of bugs it was glitchy as all hell and it just didn't have a lot of content to it it was incomplete and in desperate need of more time and development it's not that they weren't aware of the game's issues i mean they were the one making it but as a for-profit business game devs will always be a slave to the almighty deadline and Sonic 06 had a deadline that Sega wasn't willing to budge on. The seventh generation of home consoles had just dropped, and the game was scheduled for a holiday release. Side note, if you ever see a game drop riddled with bugs, just take a look at the calendar. Chances are, you're in the last few months of the year where Santa's tax return finally hits, yep. and he rides around dropping copies of whatever game just dropped down everyone's chimney. Sega oh, God that full. game out on yeah. all consoles by the Man, Godfall was such a disappointment. Because the trailers for it made it look so good. The gameplay looks really good. And then you play the game, it's like, wow. Okay, what were they thinking? End of 2006. Like, they, they use all of the development on just the graphics. 
but the Nintendo Wii wasn't powerful enough to play it, so Sonic Team was split in two, with one half being tasked with creating an entirely different game for the Wii, further hurting the development of Sonic 06. Two years of developers working insane crunch hours later, and this is what we got. This actually wasn't even the first time a Sonic game spawned two separate titles. 1994's Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Sonic and Knuckles were originally supposed to be one game, but were split so that Sega could have the oh, first game meet a did deadline. Not know that. Sonic and Knuckles was later released as a companion piece to Sonic 3 that could be attached to the cartridge to unlock the full game. This was one of the first instances of what would come to be known as DLC. While DLC makes for a great way to add new content to a finished game, it can't really be used to polish a game that was broken on release. Nah, to do that, they gotta re-release the whole game. Introducing the Definitive Edition. If a full price <laughs> AAA game launches as yeah. a an unfinished mess, just re release the finished game. Don't forget the collector's edition the and the price. This wasn't always done other just to six fix bugs. editions of Skyrim. So oftentimes, game studios would add new content or quality of life changes that honestly should have been there in the first place. This practice was popularized by Nintendo's Pokemon games, which would drop a third definitive title for each generation after their initial dual releases. Since these were updated versions and not sequels, there was little reason to buy the older games after the third one drops. This trend was incredibly egregious with fighting games that oftentimes relied yeah. on DLC characters for their longevity. Companies would release their game, drip feed players content through DLC, and then eventually release a definitive version of the game with all the DLC as a big fuck you to anybody who bought the original game. Street Fighter V was notoriously bare- Not really, you just don't buy the new fucking game. Like what? What? Not a big fuck you. <laughs> I mean, maybe, I guess, in a sense, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know, like, buying early access, in a sense. Air bones on launch, and didn't you- Like, buying early access, is that a big fuck you to everyone who is just gonna play the game after? I, I don't know. Didn't have an arcade mode, a staple of fighting games, until an update put out two years later. And another two years later, Capcom released Street Fighter V Champion Edition, which- Oh yeah, they got me with Street Fighter V. Like, that's why I don't buy Street Fighter games anymore. Or no, I think it was 4, actually, that released, like, I, I can't remember anymore. It was either 5 or 4, where the combat was just so freaking slow. And then they released the new one that actually had the faster combat. I was like, yeah, no, I give up on you. Bundled the original game with all of the DLC fighters and stages. The names for these later iterations can get extremely convoluted. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix is a remake of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, which is the fifth iteration within the Street Fighter 2 subseries of the larger Street Fighter game series. Little known fact, this game was then followed by Ultimate Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix Pro Game of the Year Edition Magnum what? Version 1.22474487139 okay. Ellipses Premium Definitive Edition featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series with extra teeth whitening final mix for real for real for real this time like i mentioned before at the end of the day game companies got seriously eat. Until finding like ways to monetize a game after a launch is a oh. great way to guarantee consistent revenue God damn, some of y'all just don't seem to get full. But you know who else gotta eat? That's right, ya boy. This video was sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is the best way to learn math and science in an interactive manner. It's an online learning platform that aims to make these subjects more accessible through intuitive hands-on exercises in place of traditional lectures. As a STEM major, I have a lot of passion for math and engineering, but I've never been particularly fond of textbooks. Luckily, Brilliant presents mathematical concepts in a way that appeals to my gamer brain. Reading a dozen chapters in a college textbook, I sleep. Learning through guided problem solving with interactive visual aids, that I can get behind. The website offers thousands of lessons with new exclusive content added every single month. The lessons engage you by allowing you to visualize concepts through simple yet effective graphical tools that illustrate each cool. subject's core idea. Brilliant provides a low stakes environment where you can just focus on learning and not worry so much about making mistakes. But it's not just for STEM students, Brilliant offers everything from the very basics to advanced lessons, making it ideal for anyone who likes to learn but just isn't too fond of the classroom setting, or even professionals looking to brush up on their math skills. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash nasu or click the link in the description. The first 200 of you who sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.
Wake the fuck up, samurai. Oh, you have yeah. false promises to make. Cyberpunk 2077 had to be one of the most disastrous launches of any. I mean, you can't. The thing is with this is a lot of people have done investigating work on this, and it seems like the main reason why the game was shit was the people they hired to do the game testing totally fucked them over. So I don't know if this is a, another game you really want to bring up as a good example for these kind of things. Um, and also, the game is actually pretty good right now. Like. Every, most things have been fixed and so I'm not saying they it shouldn't have been that way in the beginning but at the same time I'm not going to really hold it against them uh, because someone they hired didn't do their job properly obviously it was their game that should be responsible for it but they've done the community good by not like doing DLC to fix it so the game in recent memory when it came to game development studios CD Projekt Red was everyone's golden boy with nothing but a single game series to their name, they were able to build up their reputation and propel themselves to the forefront of the industry. The Witcher 3 would go on to win nearly 300 Game of the Year awards, more than any game that ever came before. CD Damn PR good game. Do no yeah. wrong. So when they announced an ambitious new open world action RPG with genital customization, everybody went crazy. People took entire weeks <laughs> off from work to free up their schedules in preparation for the game's release. Fans were treating cyberpunk like the second and third coming of Jesus. There isn't even a third coming, but if anybody could make it happen, gamers believed it to be CDPR. And in late 2020, the game finally released. Where's my car? Oh. Is this game worth it? Eh. Does that answer your question? Half of the promised features never made it to the final release. <laughs> I've never seen that clip. That's funny. Barely functioned. The game was unplayable on last-gen consoles, and on PC, you need five NVIDIA 3090s cooled by jet turbines to eke out a stable 30 FPS. Fans were furious. The backlash was so bad that Microsoft <laughs> and Sony were forced to give out refunds, with Sony removing the game from their store entirely. Two years, some class action lawsuits, and several roadmaps later, and the game is in a pretty stable state. It's returned to the PlayStation Store and consistently hovers around the top 15 most played games on Steam. Like No Man's Sky before it, Cyberpunk yeah. managed to redeem itself and regain the trust of players. But people don't want a redemption story. They, they just want the demption. That, that's not even a fucking word. Off in the distance, EA saw the shitstorm surrounding the game's release and said, I need to get in on some of that. So they shamelessly copied CDPR's homework, the false promises, the hundreds of game-breaking bugs, even the title uh, format no of Poor Man's Heart followed by a four-digit well, number. And current one year following arc, the release of Cyberpunk, EA dropped Battlefield 2042. Dude, all of these skyscrapers have no collision at all. I'm slamming into everything. Oh, there we go. That one works. Okay, that one, that one works. It was damage control time. Only Battlefield fans were a lot less forgiving. Today, 2042's average player count is dwarfed by even that of Battlefield 5. The previous game in the series yep. released three years prior. Like clockwork, just a few weeks after 2042, 343 Industries drops Halo Infinite. Only the content is anything but infinite. It was open world with a free-to-play multiplayer because yep. that's just what games do these days. Absolutely terrible. The game would launch yep. with only 10 maps and was missing series staples like campaign co-op and the forge mode. These features wouldn't be added until a year later. So what did fans get to hold them over before the live service game devs started live service games? Two maps, some belly button lint, and a slap on the ass. <laughs> At least they didn't forget to include the store on launch. That's something you can and count. A battle pass from no matter I how incomplete these games are on release, you bet your sweet bippy the microtransaction filled money maker is gonna be ready day one. But yep. 343's no bugs corporate there. greed is nothing compared to that of Activision Blizzards with their launch of Overwatch 2. Sorry, sorry, g give me a second. There we go. I never played Overwatch 1. Competitive I thought I was going to do 1 and slash 2, like a half. The hero shooter just wasn't something that appealed to me. Aside from just a handful of titles, I don't play a lot of multiplayer games. But when I heard that Overwatch 2 was going to have a brand new PvE story mode, that piqued my interest, so I downloaded yeah. it and... Oh, it's... 
it's not in the game yet. Okay, well, the game is free to play, so I might as well give it a shot. Hmm, funny, this, this looks a lot like Overwatch 1. You know, I'm a bit of a weeb, so I want to try that new hero, Kiriko. I, I wonder how I unlock her. Oh. Oh, it's one of these. I just shit out my ass. The new content, aka the two part of Overwatch 2, wasn't in the game. And the Overwatch part was now the same game with updated microtransactions. Daily playtests and feedback have given us confidence that we're creating something you're going to love. At the same time, we want to get the game in your hands soon. Nah, you mean you want to start <laughs> lining your pockets soon. Overwatch yeah. 2 isn't a sequel. It's like, that's what I've been waiting with Overwatch 2, is once they release the PvE stuff, I'll, I'll play it. If I really like it, I'll probably do some more PvP stuff. But if that doesn't end up happening, then I'm just not even going to bother with it. It's a monetization overhaul, Pat. I did hear some people do like it now because it's you don't it's not the double tank meta. So they promise you new content, announce that the new content is postponed indefinitely, then release the game without the content under the guise of early access. Early access to what? The, the fucking cosmetic store? Studios release unfinished games simply because they can. The option to patch it later is always there, so there's yeah. really no incentive to stop them from putting out a work in progress to start profiting as early as possible. They could easily just delay the game and only drop it when- Well the thing is, like, some games can get away with it, but even then, it, it's not, like, a good thing for the ones who do, because their reputation is usually, like, in the gutters after that. And the only reason they were able to get away with it to begin with because the reputation was actually really high. Uh, CD Projekt Red, uh, Cyberpunk, for example. If they did not fix Cyberpunk and this tried to release a whole new game, there's no way people would have not, like, checked reviews and, like, gameplay before buying it. There's just, at least my personal, like, I would not. Like, if CD Projekt Red was like, yeah, I can't, you know, we're just not even going to bother fixing uh, Cyberpunk. You know, it's a waste of time. We're just going to go on to our next game. I wouldn't trust their next game like I did with uh, Cyberpunk. When every feature is complete, I have no problem waiting for a game I want to play. Your favorite game gets delayed, you go and complain in a Reddit thread. I see game delays and I get bricked up. We are not the same. But more development time doesn't necessarily mean better games. Final Fantasy yep. 15 spent 10 years in the oven and still somehow came out half-baked. Not even everyone's beloved Elden Ring was safe. It was delayed, but still saw a ton of issues on launch. The game was riddled with performance. Yeah, but you're like, that's you're never going to release like this absolute perfect game with no bugs. Even back in the day when you couldn't update games, there were bugs in those games. It's the level of bugs and the um, the effect on the player. Like, is it game breaking? If it's not, it's not that big of a deal. You know what I mean? Things are popping in in the distance or not loading up correctly. Like, those aren't really that big of deals. Um, so, yeah, I mean, to me at least, that's a little ridiculous to assume that you sh the game should be completely without bugs. Performance issues on PC, and you could start most quest lines, but once you reach the latter half of the game, all of the NPCs collectively went... One NPC had to be patched into the game entirely. Gotham Knights dropped on next-gen hardware capped at 30 FPS with PlayStation 2 ass water physics. The Callisto Protocol was basically we have dead space at home. Modern ports of <laughs> older titles don't fare any better. Last year Persona 4 Arena dropped and we were promised rollback netcode. Not at launch, but eventually. Eventually months later, we got rollback. How's the player base about, looking? To be honest, I don't play those kind of games. Oh boy. Persona 3 just got ported to modern platforms last week, and to rework the visuals of this 13-year-old PSP game, Atlas just AI upscaled all of the backgrounds. Brilliant. <laughs> I'm sure that looks perfectly fine. No no visual That's artifacts funny. or anything. It definitely wouldn't have looked better if you just upscaled the native resolution to a bigger screen. Does the blurry ass text on this calendar say P3 or P7? Find out next time on an episode of Dragon Ball Z. Every piece of game audio, from the dialogue to the music, has been compressed so many times it sounds like a walkie-talkie recorded another walkie-talkie that was playing a recording of another walkie-talkie that recorded a PSP playing the original game audio while buried That's gonna suck for water. people who are fans of it. Ooh, 
That sounds really bad. That's not edited. That the, the game just sounds that crunchy. Atlas yeah. calls this a remaster, by the way. During the 2022 Game Awards, before everyone's favorite game developer came through and swept the show, Bill Clinton. Square Enix announced that they'll <laughs> be releasing a demo for their new next-gen title, Forspoken, for the PS5. I'd been eyeing the uh, game for a while, so I downloaded yeah. the demo and gave it a shot. Most people complained about the corny-ass dialogue, but that didn't bother me. I didn't exactly have big expectations for the writing of a game with an isekai premise. And yeah. if we're being honest, Square Enix has never really been known for their dialogue. Say, fellas, did somebody mention the door to darkness? Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? What did bother me was that the game handled like complete cheeks. Every action had extremely noticeable input lag. Combat was janky. The oh, auto aim I don't remember was people talking about that. Spell swapping felt clunky. The worst grappling hook known to that man. That one I did hear about. And the open world was pretty to look at, but was entirely devoid of anything interesting. The game felt more like an Unreal Engine tech demo than an actual game. But it yeah. actually wasn't even developed in Unreal. It was made using the Luminous Engine, which is the same engine used to make Final Fantasy XV. Oh, wait a minute. This, this makes a whole lot of sense. Some folks excuse the issues with the game by saying this is only a demo and not reflective of the final game. My guy. The game drops in a month. That month came and went, and now... What the hell? Yeah. Oh my god, no way. The craziest thing is that when I went to uninstall the game, I noticed an icon telling me that one of my friends had already pre-ordered the game. Which was interesting because I knew this to be categorically bullshit. And on their profile, it said that I had pre-ordered the game too. <laughs> they are literally lying to you to make the game That's seem more popular weird. than it is. But all of this is nothing compared to the true villains of the games industry. Nintendo. That seems like some kind of bug with whatever uh, you were using, not the game developers themselves. I don't think they have any uh, involvement in that. Nintendo. Hey, let me see that game you've been working on. <laughs> Perfection. Release that shit, nigga. This is a real quote by Shigeru Miyamoto. But I'm not talking about Nintendo. That's gotta wait until the next video. That's right, this video is in early access. The Nintendo content isn't dropping until season two. Here's the roadmap. Follow my socials <laughs> for video live Pokemon service video. updates and subscribe next to video. secure your season Apologies. one battle pass. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I think he um, overall is like correct, but I do think uh, some of the things he brought up just aren't correct. Like them releasing it because they know they can. I don't think it's really the case. I think it's more them releasing it because the people above them are telling them to release it, and that like they don't care if it, the game is uh you know in a working order or not. Well, they probably ask like, "Can you play it?" They're like, "Yeah, okay, release it." You know what I mean? It's people who don't play games making the decisions on when the game should be released, I think is the main issue.